Tom had an accident and Tom passed away on Sunday. It's amazing. I've been in the funeral industry now probably about uh, almost 10 years now and I know that's got to be at least the seventh or eighth uh, escort that has lost his life. So you all please slow down when you see a funeral procession. It's so much different when uh, I see the rare times that I'm in Mississippi or some of these other smaller uh, areas and when the funeral procession comes uh, the gentlemen actually park their cars, get out of the cars, pull the hats off, put their hands over their heart and let the funeral procession go by. That's amazing. In Memphis we just cut our lights on and make like we part of the procession. And it's just, it's just uh, hopefully we can really get past that. Uh, this young man uh, was young, had a whole life in front of him, and it's just taken by uh, someone's impatience. Uh, and, and impatience at a time uh, where patience should have been the order of the day. So uh, please uh, uh, pray for the family of Tom Brethard. You. Uh, prayer warriors out there, please uh, call his name out in prayer. I know he had a small child. I don't know a whole lot else. Uh, it's just amazing when you start reflecting or back over a guy's life with our experiences over these last two months. He was in a lot of transition, and he always looked like he had a lot on his mind. And it's amazing for me, I see death so much that I always ask, did someone break a pattern? And, and you know, almost to the T, almost every time I ask it, somebody breaks some sort of pattern. And I almost believe sometimes that people can feel death on them. Uh, going back, I, I just see so many things that he did over the last couple of months that just were not time. Uh, I, I really hate it. I, I mean, I, I, you know, that just teaches you, I guess that's going into what I'm saying tonight, that just teaches you when you got all these things you want to say and all these great things you want to say to somebody and once they're gone. <laughs> and you could have said them when they were here. I, I can't give you the number of folks that I was, I've promised to go to lunch with, promised to get together with, and then I'm sitting here at, at, in front of a casket or somewhere at graveside and I promised this person and promised this person. We put off so much, uh, probably put off too much because we feel like tomorrow is a given. And, and honestly, tomorrow's not promised to any of us. I mean, uh, it, when you shake me and you shake funeral directors that see death every day as a business model, then you should. I mean, I was having a great, uh, God bless you, Pastor Quentin Taylor. Um, my condolences to you too, Brother Taylor. Uh, you worked with Tom for a long time. Uh, my gut punch was I was having a nice night uh, Sunday. And then, you know, we're on a couple of those uh, industry texts and everything. And one of them came and I just wasn't prepared for it. And, and I read it, and, and it just, it just uh, was like a bombshell, a gut, uh, uh, gut blow. But uh, it just teaches you, you got to value people while they're there. You got to value people while you can see them. You can value people while you can hear them. Value people while they're there. And I, I, I guess uh, it's got me a tad bit discombobulated. Uh, and I'm not easy to shake because, you know, got to think, uh, uh, I see death on a daily basis, but this one got me. Uh, and and I, I think I was going another way, but Psalm 90, Psalm 90, uh, Psalm 90 verse 12, it's a lament of Moses. When Moses was talking about the days of man of three score and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four score years. But there's a passage of scripture in Psalm 90, verse 12. Uh, I really think that Psalm 90, verse 12. And uh, God bless you, Car uh, Car Car 
Kayan also, I know that you work with Tom closely. We're shook. I, I mean, I got so many regrets. I was holding the next time I see Tom, I'm going to tell him this. The next time I'm going to be with Tom, I'm going to tell him this. The next time we're going to do, do this, I made all these promises, and, and there's no next time. Uh, Psalm 90, verse 12, it says this. Moses, a lament of Moses. He said this, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Folks, you're not going to be here forever. I, I mean, I, I, oh, I want to see him and look upon his face. My personal preference is that that won't be tonight. But, but there's a day coming. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Folks, there is some things, I, 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 oh boy, I'm getting into a whole lot of stuff right now, at 52 that, 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 that I need to be applying more wisdom to than when I was at 22. I, I mean, I like hooping. I, I love it. If I got a suit on and you put a ball and a basket out there, I'm going to hoop with a suit on. I, I don't care how sweaty I get. You put a ball out there, I'm going to shoot. But at 52, I got to use some wisdom. You get a Charlie horse or a Terrier ACL, at 52, it's not a year. You're going through several years of recuperating. So, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. It didn't say count them. Number our days. Folks, you will not be here forever. Even if you get uh, 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 at 52, i got to realize that a significant portion, we're all living longer, but a significant portion of my life, i got to have the amazing revelation that there may just be more behind me, preach Steve, I am tonight, uh, than, than that which is in front of me. So, so i got to use my heart to wisdom. Folks, I, I said this the uh, uh, other day, and, and, and I'm married to a wonderful woman in her 50s. Uh, a wonderful woman in her 50s. But I don't want her to look 20. Uh, there's so many, uh, 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 so many appropriate uh, 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 wisdom, dignity, uh, class, and everything. And some of women in their late 40s and early 50s. And there's a prong of them that want to out 20 or 20. Folks, you need to apply your hearts unto wisdom. Lord, teach us to number our days. Folks, you can't take that little rift in your family. You can't take that little rift and take it as a security. We'll get this okay in the by and by uh, sometime down the road. And, and then, you know, all the funeral directors in the industry, they know how it feels where, where you, everybody remembers the scene from uh, Imitation of Life where Sarah Jane, who spare, spurned her mom's love, and then her mom dies and Sarah Jane's t tearing up the city trying to get back to her mama. Most people in the funeral industry have seen that time and again if you're an experienced veteran in the funeral industry. Folks, why put ourselves in this position? Folks, if, if, even if you're right, take the low road, take the high road, and take the blame. Let somebody else be right. The, 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 the relationship in the family is so important that you got to hold on to it. Lord, teach us to number our days that we apply our hearts to wisdom. Folks, I've done enough foolish stuff for, to write books about. However, at 52, the Lord has blessed me enough to see enough sunrises and sunsets. He's allowed me to answer enough wake-up calls that it's my season to apply some of the wisdom that I apply my heart unto wisdom. Folks, I'm not 25. I'm not trying to be 25. The Lord has blessed me. I've seen things. I have experience. I try to uh, instill as much as I can in the younger guys. And I said, dude, 
I'm trying to give you what I paid dearly for, and I'm trying to give it to you for free. Folks, the Bible says that there is no new thing under the sun. Lord, teach us to number our days. Folks, look, you're not going to be here forever. Stop waiting and putting off that dream. I, I, I always talk about my, my stepmother. My stepmother did, did something that I really admire. My stepmother decided, became a nurse at the age of 61. Uh, folks, I'm sure while she was in her late 50s and still going to nursing school, that people were telling her, well, girl, in five years, you're going to be 60. Well, guess what, folks? In five years, you're going to be 60 anyway. I guess the Lord gave me, I'm so hurt by Tom, by, I miss Tom. I didn't find out where Tom's mind was. I didn't find out where Tom's, uh, Tom's, uh, 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 spiritual life was at that time because I just enjoyed this guy's uh, uh, this guy's uh, 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 company so much and, and I thought his company was a luxury that I could enjoy for year upon year. Well, God always reserved the right to, to call home who he desires to call home. Uh, uh, you know, it's appointed unto man, the scriptures declare, once to die and after this, the judgment. Folks, that's an appointment that you can't reschedule. Uh, know by that appointment that each one of us has with death that, 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 that everybody, uh, don't, you don't have the pleasure of, 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 of canceling. And folks, to show you that I know just a little bit about my Bible, uh, all the way back in the book of Genesis. I think it's Genesis 5. Uh, Genesis 5 actually tells the story of, 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 uh, of, of Methuselah. You probably heard of Methuselah uh, uh, many times at your church or in Sunday school. And it said, and Methuselah lived 187 years, and he lived after he begot Lamech 782 years. And the days, this is Genesis 5, verse 27, and all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. Methuselah tore a whole lot of calendars up. He lived 969 years. One chapter later in Genesis chapter 6, because of the evil of man in the antediluvian world, the time just before the flood, the days of man were cut down to 120 years. Now we arrive at this particular text where Moses is lamenting uh, uh, and said, Lord, so teach us to number our days. And the Bible says in Psalm 90, it said that the days of man are, are, are three score and ten, and if by reason of strength, they be four score years. Uh, but it doesn't stop there. The book of James uh, uh, alludes uh, to, the, uh, to the brevity of man's life, the fleeting status of man's life by, by saying this. It said, uh, uh, it says in the book of James, uh, Steve, Steve had a senior moment just right there. It says, it says in the book of James that man's life is as a vapor. And yet, yes, so, so folks, it used to be that you were here today and gone tomorrow, but I'm submitting to you and I'm coming to you boldly, child of God, on tonight to tell you that you don't have to, it used to be that you were here today and gone tomorrow, but you can be here to, today and gone today. And I'm telling you right now, child of God, I'm telling all of you folks that, that, that Lord, that we got to you start using more wisdom. We got to apply our hearts to wisdom. We got to use these, uh, this, this thing on top of our shoulders, this thing that has two ears protruding out of it. We got to apply our hearts to wisdom. We got to value every moment. 
Folks, I, I, I had a trip. I was gone, and, and my wife allowed it. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. I thank you for having an understanding wife. But I was gone for 10 days, and, and I know I was tired uh, coming from the airport. I wanted to hit home. It was no place like home. I felt like Dorothy. Uh, no place like home. I was looking for Toto. I didn't find Toto. However, as tired as I was, I also 